So, just to do, just getting this set up. Oh, my hair is terrible. We got four people on the call so far. Everyone's muted. Hi, everyone who's muted. Hey, Dan. Is it coming through? Yo, what's up? Dude, is that you, Connor? Yeah, hey, Dan. Hey, how you feeling, man? I'm good. Yeah, I'm all good. Just a little tired. Yeah, I could see that. I could see that. <laughs> but but definitely better. Hopefully a good night's sleep will do me good. All right. That's great. That's great. Oh, God. I look terrible. I, I fell asleep. I just woke up. Um, yeah, I'll never drink that milk again. Yeah, I mean, what are you doing? So anyone that's listening uh, kind of decided to drink some rancid milk. Uh, which never goes well for anybody. And so he's been having a fun weekend. Yeah, well, it was all, like, I just, I felt really good in the morning. Well, like, I woke up, had my, like, oatmeal, and I was good to go. And then it hit me a few hours later, and, yeah, it was a rough Saturday. Or, I guess, yeah, yep. Friday. No, I guess. I get it. I get it. Um appreciate you guys joining uh it seems like a lot of the folks from the uh, raise the bar group who this is really hey sorry about that guys Everyone there again? Yeah, we can hear you now. Uh, yeah, yeah, sorry about that. I don't know what happened. The whole thing just dropped off. Oh, Kathy the Hammer Potts, Mitch is on. That's a wonderful thing. So anyone that's on right now, this is this call is primarily for the Raise the Bar athletes who are racing Oregon 70.3. I don't think anyone on the else here is racing Oregon 70.3. Um, but if they don't jump on, we can talk about anything you guys want uh, almost use it like office hours make you feel like back in the day in college um where i used to bother my teachers all the time that's super cool um and we can talk about anything hey sean how's it going man going great it's a beautiful week so. right what a view <laughs> i wish wish i was there yeah right don't we all Yep. Sean, uh, Sean, when's your next race? I'm racing Patriot in two weeks. That's right. That's right. And Troy, you're racing Alcatraz next weekend, this coming weekend. Uh, Connor, you just raced. When do you race again, Connor? So uh, we just did Oceanside, and then we just did a, a, a local Olympic, and then another local Olympic yeah. July 16th. Yeah. And then the big race so you is going to be in overall, August. You went just rocked it? Yeah. Just overall, bro rocked it? Bro Broke two hours. That was the that that was my first goal, but winning was a nice plus. Yeah, breaking two hours is a big barrier. That's a big one. And we got Kathy who's gonna No, Daniel, I think you're gone again. I think Dan's gone. Yeah. Is it, do you know how to turn your like video on for your phone? Is it just like in your permissions? Yeah, I think you swipe, I think you swipe over and it might show up. Yeah, so I see it now. Am I do you see me now? Um no. So like I can see myself through my phone, but like it doesn't let me pick anything. I can like it says too like you have two connections on. Oh yeah, I have my laptop on because the audio or the meaning ID and the email is different than like when you click the button. So I wasn't sure. But we can't see you now. Does that turn my camera on? Nope. Weird. No, I guess I can't do it on my phone. It's very bizarre. So you're doing your audio from your phone? 
Yeah, uh, I have I have my headphones plugged in, so I thought the quality would just be better than like yeah. through my laptop. Yeah. So so have you tried video through the laptop, or does your that, that should work? I'll do that because it's probably just going taking audio through it. Hey, I'm back again. <laughs> So I don't know what's going on, on my computer, guys. I apologize. It keeps on, Zoom just keeps on just closing, completely closing, which is never awesome. So, all right, we got a bunch of people racing. Connor just broke two hours, um, had a great race. He's racing again in August. Recording in progress. Jeez. That yeah, that's why I was afraid of. If you mute. Sorry. Mute it, just mute it, Connor, and you're good to go. We got Grace here. Oh, Raquel. Hey, Raquel. Denise. Hey, Denise. Oh, look. Oh, there we go. All right. So there we go. All right. So like I was saying, this call is primarily two purposes. One, it's for all the athletes racing Ironman 70.3 Oregon. They have specific questions about their training plan, the training, uh, upcoming race or anything like that. And it's for everyone else on the call. To just rapid fire questions at me and I will answer them. If you don't have any questions, I will just spew nonsense out of my mouth for about 10 minutes and then just call it. So there you go. You got me. So I'm here. This is this is more of a Q&A setup than anything else. Don't be shy. If you don't feel comfortable asking the question, you can just send a message in the app just to me and I will answer it too. Cool. Um, if, if, if you feel uncomfortable, don't, I'm not wearing pants. Only kidding. I'm wearing pants. <laughs> I am. I promise. Yeah. See, we're actually shorts. <laughs> oh, that's a nice mug, Troy. I like that color. It's cool. All right, let's do this. Anyone got questions? I, I do. So my biggest weakness, I think, is like, I have all this training, all this base, but I think nutrition is really what kills me. And like, I booked a call with performance hydration and I, they talked me through it a little bit. And it's just, it's such a tough thing because it's always like, a, it's the hot weather and it's, yeah, it's always like a hot day. All right. So you're talking about race fueling. You're not really like, nutrition could be like your nutrition on a daily basis. Oh. Race fueling, right? Yeah, I guess it's mostly race fueling. Right. I, yeah. That's race what I was during race day or I'm underfueled, like, yeah. And what makes you think it's a fueling issue and not a cooling issue or a hydration issue or a fitness issue or anything else? Um, I guess it's more of like, so I always feel like it's a nutrition issue because I always cramp up either on the run, just kind of run out of energy. Like the legs feel like they have so much more, but like they just, there's nothing left in the tank. Or I get really nauseous. And like when you stop taking nutrition, you know, hour three of the bike and an Iron Man before the marathon and you can't take anything more. It's yeah. just bad news. Um, but yeah, and then I get a lot of like the um so numbness happened, or like the heart rate will be really high, even though the legs have more. And I've done some research, I think it was because of dehydrated, because I think I was dehydrated because I didn't really take enough because I thought it was cold. Okay. So it could be that's why my heart rate was higher than it should have been. And then numbness because I probably didn't have enough carbohydrates in my system. So I started getting like the tingles in the the hands. And I'm sure I'm not eating enough. Like I just it's always been a struggle. Like I think I'm hit, I was hitting like maybe 30 carbs an hour, maybe 60. Real right. low. So there, there's a couple of things. One, it's like how much you hydrating, period, right? Like how much fluids are you getting in? the heat of the weather, like the heat of the day, things like that. And then like, what is your salt or your carbohydrate intake compared to water? Because you need to be able to balance those as well. So that's something to think about, right? I'm talking generalities right now. And then we can get specific if we need to. Yeah. Um, the next thing you have to think about is um, how many calories can you absorb? Mm -hmm. All right. So who knows how many calories roughly you can absorb in a race? Or at a an activity level. What? Per hour or like over an entire per hour? Per hour, per hour. Isn't it like 100 and then some even, some pros can go even above 100, 120? 300 to 500. 
really yeah. pure yeah. carbohydrates yeah. So, yeah no no calories calories oh calories oh i was just carbohydrates. Calories. Sorry. Sorry, sorry, yeah. let's oh. just talk in calories for a second because okay. um i think that's easier for most people to digest pun intended ah. um <laughs> so uh here's the deal to 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 be able to absorb anywhere over call it 400 you have to really train yourself to be able to do it so you have to like literally like train like in your training work like no i'm going to take in this many calories and then like work on it because it's because it becomes a point you actually can't absorb it and as your effort level goes up you can't absorb it either and that's why you get like that gut issue and you and then you can't drink or eat anymore and you get nauseous so when you get that nauseous feeling or like i can't take any more in it's typically because you're taking in more than you can absorb um and then you just get stuck so like Andy always does this, his favorite thing. And I make fun of him. He goes, your body has sphincters, okay? And the sphincters, if you take in too much gel or something, they get clogged and you can't get, and this is what he does. You can't get through the sphincter. So that's the reason why you have to take in water too, not just uh, electrolyte beverage or just gel or whatever else, okay? So I kind of digress a little. Second, you could train your gut to take in more, right? So up to 450, 500 calories. You could also train to take in less and become more fat efficient and fuel efficient, which you, I'm sure you've heard people talk about. I tried time. the ketosis. It got, it didn't go very well. For most high performance endurance athletes, it does not work. Mm-hmm. Um, like what's his name? Bob Sibahar. I don't know if you guys know that name. He's like a nutritionist. He does a lot with USA triathlon, pretty well known. You could Google him. He swears by like, training your body to go low calorie and fat burn and this stuff that's dan Plus's whole thing right yeah. yes but well yes and no no oh, okay yes and no dan so all right it's actually really interesting um we talked about this is going off nutrition but uh i was going to talk about it this week a little bit have any of you guys watched uh or listened to the rick roll podcast when he interviews uh the norwegians coach Okay, so I'm going to send that out for you guys. It's fantastic. Um, And it's not much different from what you've heard us talk about a lot, which is really great for us. We've been talking about this stuff for like five, 10 years. And now like everyone's on their Norwegian train. And it's like, oh, yeah, yeah, we've been talking about this forever. So what he talks a lot about is energy expenditure, right? And so this is where I'm going back to Dan on this. Uh, you have to figure out what your energy expenditure can be in training and racing, right? And you have to fuel for that and you have to train towards that. So like Dan wants you to, um, what's the best way to put it? He wants you to eat the least amount to be able to fuel yourself for race day, right? And also like try and be in zone two, zone three. I'm simplifying right now so that you're using your long-term fat stores. One, those, these things aren't mutually exclusive. You're always using all your fat stores. You actually typically burn sugar first because it's readily available, right? But they want you to kind of dive into that. Um, so if you can understand your energy expenditure, you can understand what you, what you need, then you can work backwards into what you should eat, if that makes sense. And then here's the part that you're going to be like, dude, you're just saying nothing that makes sense right now. It changes all the time. It changes every race. It changes every training session. You can get pretty close and you kind of figure out something that works, but like you go into every race different than the previous one. No matter if everything is the same, you just like consistent, you go in different. So you have to look at like on race day, like, oh, what am I craving? Oh, I, I really want like pretzels. That means you don't have enough salt, right? That's why you're cramping, Connor. So let me get more salt in my body, right? Um, I think all long course athletes should carry salt no matter what. Not a lot, just enough. Or or like dump it in at least in one bottle every two hours or something like that. Like that, it'll help you and it won't hurt. Mm -hmm. Um, I I don't think so, at least. I could be wrong there. Um, Long course, Ironman especially, you should be taking a salt supplement. You're just sweating too much, especially if it's hot. You're sweating too much. Yeah, my um, biggest thing is like it's not even like it's so like it's putting it on your bike and carrying it all with you. That's the toughest. Right. So, so listen, shameless plug here, Connor. 
Yeah. Infinite nutrition. You get whatever you want. No. When you want it. Yeah. How I you want it. I've used them so much. And that's actually what made me really nauseous in Utah. And I tried to use them and it just, it didn't work. And I've used them on and off for years. So, so let me give you a, a, my little tip is I used to get nauseous too. Yeah. I mix it with other stuff. Okay. So like I, I get the chocolate infinite a lot of times and I mix it with Starbucks coffee. <laughs> and that's oh, what I do. <laughs> like, like the cut line that comes in the can, right? Like the, the, it's non-perishable, you know, that kind. Mm -hmm. Or like, and or I'll mix it with like fruit punch or something stupid. Like I just, that's how I do it. But like, I can tell you, I always tell the story. If you need something like with an infinite, they can do it. Like I'm allergic to one of the sugars, like the simple sugars that they use. Mm -hmm. um, so I, they actually supplement my sugar with like a mushroom sugar. Oh. Um, so like you can, you can talk to them and get what you want. And let's say you don't use infinite, right? like shame on you no i'm only kidding um go get like salt sticks and literally break open the capsule or whatever and dump it into your bottle whatever you I start start doing i started using scratch the yeah. hyper the hyper whatever the super calorie one yeah and i've been playing with the salt tablets yeah scratch is great it is and it's really nice on your stomach and it tastes good too um watch your calorie in based on your water intake too though because like i said you got to be able to absorb it that's the biggest thing it's like so like i was talking to the guy on performance hydration and he was like okay so you can mix 100 calories per bottle but if it's a hot day you're gonna drink more which means like now you've like used up all your calories really quickly and you don't have enough fluid yeah and 100 calories an hour is not enough in a, in a half hour sorry, i keep i see 100 carbohydrates Carbs, an hour. yeah 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 i don't i actually don't know the carb amount off the top of my head of what you want um, I don't honestly. I I, I, never, never I I personally don't. I don't know it. It's been a few. Yeah, I don't know. Um, but I would start there. Like I would say, hey, listen. I actually was just doing this for a guy. This guy. This is random aside. Um, but maybe it'll give you some guy some uh, knowledge or other questions. He asked me, um, are trainer miles equivalent to road miles? And if so, what do I have to do on the trainer to get up to, to be ready for my 70.3? And I said, kind of what I'm saying, you know, you're actually asking the wrong question. It, the question is really, what is my energy expenditure in a half Ironman? And how do I get that in my training? So in a half Ironman, let's say you push 200 watts. I want to say the approximation for 200 watts for an hour is about 720 kilojoules. Uh, you don't have to, you can quote me on that if you want, or Google it. Um, I think I'm right. Um, 720 kilojoules, because that's like, uh, what, I forget the formula, but it's about 720 kilojoules per hour, right? So 720 calories per hour. So in a typical half Ironman on the bike, average age grouper is probably burning uh, 1,700 to about 2,500 kilojoules. Does that sound about right, uh, Sean? Do you know your number? I do not. Yeah, that's about, I mean, check your last half Ironman. I bet you that's pretty close. Um, because I know in an Ironman, I burn like five, 4,500 to five. So it seems approximately right. Um, most age groupers are about 200 watts, give or take, given their weight, height, and all that stuff. So what you do is you say, all right, I'm burning, uh, what did I say, 720 kilojoules an hour. I need, I could probably absorb, you know, about 300 to 400, but it's pretty high effort level. So I need to get in 300 to 400 calories, right? Or on the bike, for example, what I was telling this guy is in your training, you need to be able to go through a long ride that has 1500 to, you know, 2,500 kilojoule burn. And then how do you build that into your training? And then, so they're bringing it back to the nutrition. It's the same thing. And I know I'm going to be out for four hours. I'm going to be burning about 700 kilojoules an hour. I don't need to replace everything. I need to replace, you know, seven, what is that? Three sevenths of it. How am I going to do it? Let me experiment with it and try and build more and more as I go. Does that make sense? Or did I lose anyone here? You replace three sevenths, like under 50%. Well, that, no, three sevenths would be less than 50%. Yeah, under 50%. Um, it'd be, it'd be 40 something percent. 
Okay, three seven. There's one right. No, yeah, under. You, you did the inverse. That's cool. Math. We do math now too. It's a math class. Mm -hmm. Um. All right. Because that's three three hundred divided by seven hundred, right? Roughly, which is about what I said. Make sense? Yes. Does that spawn any other questions? Tommy, did I kind of answer your question at all? Yeah. So yeah, I just need to figure out what to expand. And I need to like, and honestly, everybody I talk to, I just got to like plug and play. And I think what I'm going to try to do is I, I want to do a really concentrated bottle. And then it's like keeping your calories separate from your electrolytes. So you can always like change what you need based on the needs of the race. So like if it's like if you're hungry, eat more. If you're feeling like little dehydrated, you drink more. Because yeah. because if you feel one way and you need to like if you drink more but also get more calories and more salts, then it's like but you don't need more calories and your sphincter, your sphincter's done and it can't even drink more water at that point. Water yeah, more water. water. So yeah, I take the water. Yeah. Yeah, I actually I really like my calories in liquid form. And then I keep my like a bar or something as like my backup if I need. You know, M and M's have. Oh, that's not bad. It's honestly been pretty because it fits in that damn bento box thing in my shiv, which is, can't yeah. get anything except those. And the candy coating keeps it from melting. Okay. Bigger, so, figured out then. Let's go. Get me, yeah, it's yeah. It's hey, dude, it all just takes time. That's all. Yeah. And experimentation. Mm -hmm. I, I hate what that. It, what it is what about salt tabs or uh like uh the tablets uh I, I find those are easy for me to you know not have to worry about like uh like taking in fluid or or salt uh sorry um food i just basically yep. pop some pops and tabs actually magnesium too um, yep. to kind of beat the beat the uh, cramping yeah What's so all i keep, i have magnesium in my infinite mix which really helps and then salt, you just drop it in. I just drop it in my bottles. Uh, funny enough, um, Kathy Potts, on, who's on the call, um, saved my life once. And as Ironman uh, Chattanooga, I was running along and I ran by her feeling like a million bucks. Within like 10 steps, I cramped in both my hamstrings. And I was like, going down. And I literally was falling and Kathy caught me. And then she gave me all her salt tabs. I probably ate like 20 of them. And then I took off and I saw her again later in the day. She, she literally saved me from like cracking my head. And it was amazing. That's awesome. Yeah, it was a pretty good one. Awesome. Uh, yeah. Oh, she just wrote that. That's really funny. No, she wrote it like seven minutes ago in the chat. That's really funny. <laughs> That's really funny. All right. What's up? Any other questions or any, did any other thoughts or questions spawn from that? No. Have you ever used Hotshot? Um, yeah, I didn't like it. Um, but again, personal, you know, food's personal. And this is a great way to put it. Uh, oh, so it was actually just, I, I, I came across a video for like, really, for like a, this guy was just talking about coaching and I, I had to leave. But so he was saying like, if you're pushing constant watts and you have your threshold and if you like i guess i'm, I'm gonna say if you go up a hill and have to push past that threshold a little bit if you do that too many times it burns too many matches early so is it always safer to like shift down a gear i think i, I was guilty of ocean side i think I, I ran out of gears and i pushed the red zone too much so i think i burned matches for my run so uh... I'm going to say stuff that's pretty controversial right now. Yeah. How I roll. Um, I hate that phrase, burning matches. I just oh. don't like it because your training is dynamic, okay? Especially if you train with us, your training is very dynamic. And it's to prepare you for things like that in a race. We don't prepare you just to press at 200 watts for five hours. We prepare you to be able to handle changes in the terrain changes in the wind, changes in every everything else. The, of course, the, the race dynamics, right? So I actually find that increasing and decreasing watts actually help me a little bit sometimes. Um, does that mean you go out and just smack it at 500 watts and just 
pin it? No, that's silly. But I don't think like a couple minute interval at, you know, 20% over your FTP is a bad thing. Um, if you look at best bike split, I'm sure some of you have used it before. It's how you can race plan. I think that's a little rigid too. Don't get me wrong. But if you look at it, um, they actually account for you going over your FTP or your race watch for a big portion of the race in different spots, knowing you're going to go under as well. Um, we've talked about it before. Who knows? It's roughly the 20 watt rule or 20% rule um, that we talk about for racing. Anyone? Anyone? Okay. So let's say you want to average our number for the day, 200 watts in a race. Okay. Typically, most race courses, you're going to push about 220 to 215 to 230 in the race, roughly 20 watts more. And 20, yeah, that's 10% though. So maybe the 20% doesn't work, but uh, depending on, so it's roughly 20 watts, no matter where you're at. Um, so like, again, you go in a race, Ironman Mount Tremblant, and you're like, oh, I want to ride, I don't know. 455 in the race okay i want to ride i want to go 455 that means that if you average out power normalized power even you have to push probably 235 for average dude it's like 165 pounds um right so 235 240 235 um you're not going to stay 235 the whole time it doesn't work that way um, you'll probably be pushing 255 most of the race, and then you'll average out at 235. Um, so uh, I forget what the question was, uh, but the answer is um, train yourself to be able to handle ups and downs and watts, and pushing a little hard at different point, points or another are not going to affect you. Connor, especially for you at the pointy end, if you're trying to win races, um, you can time trial most races and still be in, in contention to win the race, but it's front of the age group race or the pro race. You have to be dynamic to actually be, to actually win the race. Make sense? Yeah. Cool. All right. Um, that's just a good question. Um, you know, I typically for everyone else doesn't, oh, everyone can see this typically, you know, train with cliff blocks, infinite, whatever nutrition you train with. But on course, there's something else. I think for Ironman right now, like it's Martin, right? Um, what should I do, right? Okay, couple things you should do. You don't need to go buy a year supply of Martin. That's just silly. It's really expensive. Um, but if you want to buy it, let me know. I could probably get you a discount on it. Um, but uh that's what we do ap race we take care of everyone let's go brotherhood uh and sisterhood peoplehood um but you should buy at least like maybe one or two just so you can try it and it's more for taste and flavor and consistency than anything else to make sure you can handle it um because you never know when you might need it second you should google and look up what the nutrition information is on a martin gel and compare it to what your stuff is and what you carry. So you have like a rough plan. Like again, you go into a race, you're like, oh, I need about 300 to 400 calories an hour. You can get that any way you want, right? Uh, know what works and kind of doesn't work for you, like solid versus liquid or whatever for that matter. Um, and then, I was say, oh, so you could still train with whatever you want, but on race day, you're like, oh, my gel has... 150 calories and a Martin gel has a hundred, right? Or 75, let's say you come math easy. So I need two Martins for every one I would take. So you should know that. Just like you should know how much, how many calories and kind of like carbs or sugars are in a bottle of Gatorade because that's what they serve on the course too, right? So you should know that. So you're like, oh, because let's say you carry all your stuff, which is like typically what I do. I know Andy only carries his stuff, right? But like, let's say I'm going and I have all my stuff and things are going great. And then I drop a bottle. Well, I, I knew that bottle had 350 calories. It had this much sugar. Now, how am I going to replace that? And that's what like preparation comes in hand. Like, please, like, don't be so rigid in your thinking. And like, it has to be this way. It has to be this way. They can derail you. 
knowledge makes you flexible experience makes you flexible and that's what you want you want to be able to be flexible and be like all right i i dropped that bottle i need 350 calories how am i going to get it oh, i can get it from this gatorade and get it from this gel oh and i'm thirsty too so i'm just going to grab water too and do it that way so that's what i would do one take inventory of what you're taking in now what you think you need in your stuff do the equip know the equivalent for whatever's on course um and then get one or two of whatever's on course just to try it just so you have some peace of mind and if you can carry your own stuff let's go grace i've never seen the thumbs up thing before that's cool yeah. we use it all the time for for work i, I like it so people don't have to see you I and mean, you can just yeah up and like, i'm here i swear i'm gonna yes. write some ai code for that well you don't have to write a code you just have to prompt it to be like thumbs up. yeah all right. All right. What do we got? What else we got here, guys? Let me see total calories. What? Let me see total calories. How are you factoring in the swim? Like, are you... uh, my swim calories come before. So, like, I drank in the morning. Um, I know when I get out of the water, I probably burned, probably burned about 500 to eight, what, 500 to 700 calories in a typical swim in an hour? 800? That's about right, I want to say. I'm like, oh, I'm about 500, 800 in the hole, but I didn't eat breakfast, so I'm pretty close. Um, I get on the bike. Once I, I get settled, I start my nutrition plan. I don't really worry about that much. I usually take a gel or something right before I go in the water too, but it's more like a, not that you need it, but like a caffeine boost than anything else. But you're already shaky, so you don't really need it. So you gotta do what works for your stomach too. A lot of people, once they go horizontal, it's not good to have anything in you to just sit in those sphincters. So. Um, here's the other thing you have to account for too. Uh, and then Sean, one second. Like we said, everything's different. Most races, let's say, oh, um, I can typically absorb about 400 calories an hour, right? It gets real hot and your effort level goes up, it's, that number is probably gonna go down. So that's why it's like experience and experimentation and just knowing things really helps you in this situation, in every situation. All right, Sean, what were you gonna say? Actually, yeah, uh, you mentioned best bike split. Uh, so, I, so I just started playing around with it a bit. Um, and I guess I was wondering, have you raced with it? What, what do you think about it? Uh, yeah, so, Oh, it's a tough one. So we're going to mention this on the call on Wednesday. So spoiler alert. Okay. Um, in general, right now in our society, whether it's triathlon, swimming, running, work, um, medicine, we are very much an information rich, experience poor culture. And like, this is the same thing with travel. Like everyone's trying to get all the information possible. And then that we're all reductionists. How do I boil it down to the one thing I need to know, right? And you're, everyone's missing the point, all right? Like best bike split is real, can be really close. I mean, crazy close and accurate, but it misses the experience side of it. And it misses like understanding, oh, the wind's not what best bike slip said and it shifted. So I need to adjust my training, my, my, my racing strategy is different. Or again, guys like Connor, oh, these guys are going up the road. I need to go with that, right? Um, we tried it with, uh, I've tried with a few of our pro athletes actually to race by best bike split and it doesn't work for that. I mean, it, it, you know who used it actually really successfully? It's TJ Tolson. He used to use it all the time and he used it really, and he'd break it down to like, I don't know, 500 data points and he'd be able, and you buy a computer, like literally beeps and tells you what power to push. And you're just playing a video game with TJ though. He was racing from the back a lot of times and just coming through. So he, it, it's not like it was dynamic, right? More similar to an age group race. So you're like, Oh, I can do this. I think it's a really good guide. I think it could really help you like, Oh, like I think it helps like doing it like six months out from a race. And you're like, oh, I want to go this speed, this this time. What kind of watts do I need during the race? And then what do I need in different sections? Which means I need to be able to go up and go down. Right. Um, 
again, I'm more of a, I'm big into power, right? Like I, I'm really big into power, but I'm also very much more like a feel guy. Like you need to, an experience. Like you got to know like what the race is giving you on the day and all this stuff. Like I'll digress for a second, right? I can't tell you how many times people are like, all right, I'm going to go on the marathon. I'm going to go out at 820 pace for four miles. I'm going to build to 805. I'm going to build to 755. And then they like, have a mile by mile plan, right? Bullshit. <laughs> you get out on the road and you push, you're like, yo, I got what I got. Like, this is it. Like, I got it. This is what I got today. Like I get that so many times, even for myself, I'm like, all right, I'm, I'm going to run the first half of the marathon and one, I don't know, 135, and then I'm going to come home in 133. I get through the first half, it's like 137. The second half is like 205 because like, it is what it is. Like, like, like you force it as much as you can, but you're like, I should be running 620s right now. Oh no, I'm running 745s. All right your plan was to run 620s go do it doesn't work that way you train so you can execute right and troy we talked about this the other day i think yeah it was you and me you train so that you control the race the race doesn't control you right and you can dictate what's happening that's really the point of training so you can dictate every step along the way what you want to happen but it doesn't always work that way and so like yeah best plus like in theory is great i'll never forget I used best, best bike split one year in Arizona, right? Um, I was like, I want to go, I wanted to go 425. I got to the last turnaround. I was on pace to go 423. You know what I rode that day? 445. It was terrible. <laughs> I limped home. The wind shifted. I, I don't know what happened. I fell apart. I probably had bad nutrition, Connor. And it just went to crap. Like, it just don't. Like it is, it is. So, so yes, I think really good for planning, especially early on. I don't love it for execution, but again, I'm just giving you my experience. No, that's great. Yeah. I mean, try it. Tell me, let me know what you think. You might love it. Sounds good. And, yeah. I was, I was hoping it, the day is smoothing, smoothing what I'd say are spikes when, you know, cause, cause uh, sometimes you get on the second loop of uh, Ironman and, and you're kind of like, ooh, what happened on the first one? I must have been, I must have been gunning it. And then, uh, you know, so hoping to smooth some of that out a little bit. Yeah, so, yeah, you should be able to do that anyway, though. Like, that's just an ex- like kind of like, like, be smart. Like, oh, I'm, I'm on the first loop of the bike and I'm pushing 30 watts over my three hour power at best ever. You might have a problem there. Or even if you're a half iron power, like you might have an issue. Right. Right. Uh, this my just my two cents. Or three. Maybe it's worth one. I don't know. Uh, yeah. Uh, Troy, any other questions about Alcatraz since uh, yeah. Andy and, and went over it a little bit? While we're on nutrition, I think the pre-race material said that they don't allow gel packets and you, you can carry like a flask. Is that like true or does people actually carry a gel um or um, like how do you even put a gel in a flat i've never done that i've sm- smuggled many things into alcatraz island before <laughs> i'm just gonna say <laughs> and, no um i don't know the answer to that i really don't are you talking about like getting on the boat or whatever or yeah i mean on the run oh on the run they said okay. no gels on the run Maybe they don't have them at the aid stations, but how are they going to stop you from having one in your pocket? Yeah, I know. That's what I was thinking. Like, if you just consume- They might frisk on the way out of T- T2. <laughs> you never know. Uh, it is San Francisco. Um, no, you'll be... I think my my guess is they probably... I don't know. My guess they, is- yeah, they said no gels on the run, but you can, like, put it in a flask and carry a flask. I so like- I actually think the flasks are easier anyway. So run over to you your just, truck. Just wind gel into it. Yeah, you just squeeze it into it, and that'll work Good fine. Water. And like, if you're in your bike shop, you can buy like a bigger gel container, and it's cheaper. And then you can just dump it in. That works pretty good. And then just add a little water and shake it because otherwise it's hard to squeeze it out. So try before race day. 
or just carry M and M's. They're candy coated and don't melt. It jumps your in your yeah. mouth, not in your hands. Right. Your hands will turn blue, but yeah. Oh, that's the worst. You ever use chocolate gel and it gets all over you and it looks like you pooped yourself? That's a great one. Yeah, I like that one. Um, all right, what else? Anything? I use maple syrup. Put that. Oh yeah, people love maple syrup. It's a good one. I'm good. getting a lot of really good ideas. Yeah. How about pickle juice? You can pickle back stuff. That's my new thing. I pickle pickle juice in the or morning. What? <laughs> You you should talk to Scott Caduce. He's done all these too. He I like loves- the sweet pickle juice. It's just like I don't know, like that sugar and sweet. It's just yeah. like well, it gives you all that sodium for or right. It has a ton of sodium, so you don't- yeah. I'll, I'll chug that in the morning before I go, and then I'm gonna I'll probably put it in my my T two just in case. Yeah. I wouldn't do that for Alcatraz though, because sharks really like the smell of pickle. Juice. Yeah. <laughs> 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 your shark these actually taste really good wow these are really good ideas like we've done this stuff before it's weird it's super weird <clears throat> um all right what else what else we got i'm here i got i got another couple of minutes do you have a thermal suit for socket alcatraz the water's cold no you don't need it no i swim in the ocean a lot like every week i don't know i'll yeah. I don't know. You'll be fine. Yeah, I'll be fine. Just, you know, just going slow. It helps always. Well, so like what when I did Oceanside, the water is 55 and my arms were numb the entire swim. I even had a thermal cap on. I was not cold at all. I thought the water was warm. Really? I was miserable. I even wore a jacket for the bike because I was so cold. Yeah, but you don't live in that, you don't train like in that water and that temperature normally where Troy does. I could, but Michigan's a little cold. It'd be like yeah. 40, 30. And... Yeah, it's really cold. That doesn't make sense. Mm-hmm. I liked AP's idea about the, about the ice down the, down the, uh, the front. That's get that shock out of the way. <laughs> Cause... Yes, absolutely. Oh yeah. I went swimming the morning before, or I tried to swim before. I, so, yeah, I always swim before a race, no matter what. Alcatraz makes it impossible. But, mm-hmm. like, there was one year Andy and I were racing in Philadelphia, and the hotel and the staging is on one side of the river, and then you take a bus over to the other side, and there's no swimming. I just walked all the way up the road, and I swam across the river. I almost got, I almost got swept away, though, so I had to – it was not good. <laughs> Why is the GPS tracker – why is he over there? Yeah, yeah, it was not a good one. It was not good at all. Um, yeah, that's what I got. Por- parting knowledge on you guys. So uh, this week for uh, Coach's Corner, we're going to talk about like executing your best race, analyzing your race, kind of like similar to stuff that we just talked about. So if you have more questions, you can email them before or you just put, throw them in the chat or just ask, which could be helpful. Um, We're going to talk about plans for the rest of the year, like upcoming team races. We're talking about camps, too, because, yeah, um, we kind of have been delaying that one a lot. But that's more because we didn't have answers. We didn't. We needed answers, and we didn't have them. We'll put it that way. Um, Yeah, I think that's it. That's what we got. Um, Patriot hat. Yeah, what were you going to say? Um, yeah, running with power. So, so uh, power on the Ironman is it is yeah. a good way to go, or is kind of should I? Is it more kind of like look at your heart rate? And- Do you train with power on the run now all the time? So you're used to it. You love it. That's how you. That's how you execute your workouts, right? Kind of, kind of a mix. I'll do pace and and I'll look at look at my power. Yeah, and pace and power should be pretty close if everything's flat and not hilly. Um, where power helps is when it is not when it is hilly and when it's windy helps a lot. I'm going to default back to my previous answer, which is uh, good luck executing a plan when things go to shit. But like, oh, no, but seriously, yes, it is a great idea because you, just like on the bike, you're controlling for other variables, you're controlling for wind, you're controlling for 
uh, hills and stuff like that. Like when I was training like to race, I used power all the time because again, I live in a really hilly place and a really windy place. So, and then I got used to it just like on the bike. Like I would never use pace on the bike. So I use power on the bike. So I same thing on the run. Right. But I would say you need to be really familiar with it. You need to do most of your training with it. So you understand how they work together. Because at the end of the day, everything's about familiarity, right? And what works like uh, Todd Mellinger, some of you guys know him. He's on our team. I mean, I always debate whether you should use normalized power or average power in a race or, or three second and five second power. He swears by normalized power. I completely understand why he, why he uses it. I think it makes a ton of sense, but I don't train with normalized power. So the numbers are kind of foreign to me, so, but I know based on average power, everything that could come down the line, like what my speed will probably be, um, what my effort really is, what my, what my normalized power actually will be. I can probably predict it based on my average power and how I'm racing. So it, again, get familiar with stuff, understand it, like just use it. Like when we have most people start with power as bike or run, we just have them use it for a while. So they get used to it and they you get used to the numbers. Like, do you remember when you started triathlon, started using power or zones and people, it was like, you'd write them down like on your arm or on a piece of paper, or you have to write down your workouts, right? It's because it was all new. But then after a while, you're like, uh, I don't, you need to write it down. You just know it. And so that's, that's what you want, right? Like, it's just familiar and you know it. Cool. Cool. Well, you got five seconds to ask me another question. Otherwise, I'm going to hang up on you. No, I won't hang up with you guys, but I'm going to say goodbye. Anything else? Was this helpful? Cool. It's awesome. All right. Yeah. Um, we'll be doing these on average once a month. Uh, around the beginning of the month. The summer is a little tricky because I travel a lot. So sometimes I don't have internet where I am. Um, but believe it, I don't have internet. It's amazing. Um, but uh, around once a month, it usually be the first of the month. Um, and it'll be, this is open forum to ask questions. I typically will not come with something I want to cover. Um, so if you don't have questions, it's useless kind of, unless you just want to listen, obviously. Um, our other things are for that. And if we, if you guys are like, hey, we need to do this more often, let me know and we can do this. We'll make them 20 minutes long and just 30 minutes long, just do it regularly. Um, hey, let's all get on a call and do it. I'm happy to do that too. Or like the other thing is we used to do them all the time, which is like the coach's corner check-ins on Facebook. If, a, if like people got questions, if they ask them on Facebook, I could just answer them. Uh, because that's so other people could see it or if you email me I'll just go on the group chat and do a quick video and go over it so we can like you should never have questions that are unanswered let's put it that way cool I have a question I no no <laughs> go for it what's up <laughs> I would love to do a relay I've never done a relay and I don't know how to like ask if someone on AP Racing wants to join a relay with me or like, I don't know, really yeah, how you have a, yeah, yeah. So we've done, they actually, we had a team do a relay at uh, Oceanside. Oh. <laughs> so um, the best way is if you have a specific race you want to do a relay for, post up to the group and be like, hey, looking to put a relay together for this race. Who wants in? Got if you it. don't get takers, right, <laughs> then just come to me and then I'll find people for you. It's easy. Oh, okay. Yeah, no problem. Do you want to swim, bike, or run? I don't care. All right. You know what used to be an awesome race to do a relay for? Malibu Tri. I don't know if it's still going on. Yeah, yeah I do. I yeah, I do. I'm doing Malibu. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Best race to do a relay for because you get that. Typically, there's a lot of celebrities that are doing the relays, so you hang out and transition with them. Like one year, I I did a relay with. Two other, um, like I was the guest with two other celebrities, and then like we're, I was hanging out with like Cindy Crawford and J Lo, and I was like, "What's up, girls?" It was great. And Matthew McConaughey, honka honka, it was good. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one for that one reason. Yeah. David Hasselhoff, I don't know if he still does it. He did the the Star Spangled Banner one one or two years we were there, 
he shows up at like six in the morning drunk as a skunk. Like, hey, it was amazing. Uh, I think they, I don't know if they change it, but the Olympic is on Saturday and the yep. in celebrities on Sunday. Yeah, they did it a few years ago because they were getting so many people to the race. Yeah. So, word up. All right, guys. Hope everyone is, has a great taste Sunday, right? Hope everyone has a great rest of their Sunday. Um, take charge on Monday um, and just hang out on Tuesday. And no, no, again, have a great week, guys. Um, good luck to everyone racing this week and next week. Um, let's get it. All right. Peace. Thank you.